Now, if you need to quickly cut out some complex subject that has hair or fur in Photoshop, the first step in the process is to access any of your W shortcut tools, go up to the options bar and choose the cloud setting beside the select subject button. This is automatically going to make your selection way better than it normally would if you used the default select subject button or the remove background button. But with that set up in the options bar, go ahead and click on select subject. It might take a second to load and once that selection is created, we can remove the background with a layer mask. But after doing this, there's a problem that you may not notice that will drastically change how convincing your cutout looks when you move it into another project. Let me explain. Right now, this looks pretty decent, but if I were to go and add a color fill layer behind this cutout, I'll just choose a dark gray, for example, click OK and drag it below the image. With this dark color, it seems all right, but if I were to make this a little bit lighter in color, you can now see that there's this very clear discoloration around the edge of the fur. For the most part, the fur itself actually looks pretty decent. This is the great part about the cloud detailed results selection method. It often does select these little bits of hair really well. However, at this point, if your selection edge doesn't look as clean as you're hoping for, then you need to use this other method instead. In this example here, I use the exact same cloud detailed results method to cut out this subject, but I feel like some of his fur is just not very nice. I think it could be touched up a bit more. This is where the select and mask workspace comes into play. We can just double click on our layer mask to access the select and mask workspace. And I'll go ahead and choose a view mode. I'd recommend doing on black or on white so you can best see the fringing. I'll do on white and I have the opacity at 100%. And from here, we want to go and select the refine edge brush tool. What this allows us to do is go and paint over the edges of the fur or the hair, and it's automatically going to touch that up and make things look a lot more realistic there. You can scale the brush using the bracket keys and then just go and paint along the outer edge just so that you're adding in the little details that might have been missed from your original selection. Now what's important to note however is when you're painting with this tool it may not work as good as you expect it to. So the first option you can try to change is the refine mode. We have the color aware mode which I currently have selected and then we have the object aware mode which is another option that will change how your refine edge brush tool operates with your image. If I were to go and change this right now it'll ask me if I want to change this so I'll click OK and you'll notice how it kind of changes the edge of my subject. In this particular project, the color aware mode looks a little bit better for me, but as a general rule of thumb, if your subject has a very clear difference in color compared to the background, use the color aware mode. But if your subject has some details and colors that match a little more closely with the background, then in that case, use the object aware mode. In most situations, I would default to the object aware mode, but before recording, I was testing this out and I found the color aware looked a little bit better. So if you have any problems with the details from your original selection, you'd have to go into the selected mask workspace as you just saw here. But once that's complete, we have some additional touch-ups to make your selection look perfect. Back in the original project, assuming we all now have the nice edges that we are are looking to save, we can now get rid of some of this fringing using the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool will allow us to sample some of the texture from our subject, in this case the fur, and then go and paint over all of the edges where there is the fringing so we'll have some nice fur texture that is properly colored. To do this non-destructively, I'll click on my image layer, add a new layer above it, and then to ensure that this layer can only be visible on the visible pixels of the underlying image, I'll right click on that new layer and go to create clipping mask. I'll then rename this layer to clone. With that clone layer selected, I'll access the clone stamp tool by pressing S, and then I can go and choose a soft round brush, blending mode set to normal and opacity and flow at 100%, with the sample option set to current and below. With all of that good to go, we basically just need to tell Photoshop what pixels we want to sample from to then paint with. So we can set our sample by holding Alt or Option and clicking anywhere on our photo. So while holding Alt or Option and clicking, that sets our sample point. And now when I go and paint, you can see that little crosshair. That is our sample point that is drawing information to then paint with underneath our brush. And because of the clipping mask that is on our layer currently, I can only paint within the visible pixels of the fox layer in this case. So that way we can quickly go and add that color in. 
If you have any mistakes, of course, just hold alter option and then refine it as needed. You'll likely need to constantly reset your sample point and then just paint out as needed until you're happy with the result. I'm just going to repeat this process all the way around my subject until all of the fringing is gone and I'll meet you when that's complete. Once your clone adjustments are complete, turning that on and off, we have gotten rid of all of that fringing. We still have those nice details on the edges, except now we won't have the discoloration around those edges anymore. So now we can go and put this into a new background and it's going to look a lot more clean. Now I know it can be frustrating if these techniques don't work on the images that you're working on too. And if that's the case, it's likely because you have more complex of an image than these methods can handle. If that's the case, then you should definitely check out this video right here where I explain a foolproof way to cut out any complex details related to hair or fur from any subject. So if these techniques didn't work for you, make sure to check out this video next where you can learn exactly what to do to solve the problem.